Good morning, everybody. Um, it's my morning, and I guess it is your evening. So thank you for finding time to come to a prayer meeting today. Um, prayer is very essential, and that is why I have taken it upon me to join in speaking, because I know it's presenting a problem to get people to speak often. So today, we shall be looking on uh, the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. We're going to read from verses 1 to 15. So can we turn to our Bibles to Genesis chapter 18? Verses 1 to 15. Let us pray. Father, I commit today's meeting unto your divine care. Ask, Lord, that you would take over and minister to us one by one and prepare us for another prayer day today. Help us to get focused to this short time we are going to listen to your word, so that through your word, we shall be motivated. We shall receive the garment of prayer and pray and pray through. For those who are still yet to come in, Father, remind them that prayer is the main engine of every church they will remember to come in and join in this prayer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Again, praise the Lord. Again, thank you for finding time to uh, come in to this prayer meeting. God bless you. So we are going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 18. And we're going to consider verses 1 to 15. I read, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of man while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. You see, although Abraham do not know him, know the people that came to visit him, he has a humble heart that makes him respect everybody. Makes him respect everybody. The Bible says that he bowed before them. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. You see another mindset of Abraham, always open to help. Open to help. In those days, when people walk, they don't drive cars. They don't use Uber to move around. They walk. So either they are able to afford a camel or a horse or there's one other animal I'm thinking about, I cannot remember the name. That is where they move. If you cannot afford that, then you walk. And because he knew that those days people walk distance, he desired to care for them. How do we desire to care for others without looking for uh, the way it will 
really suit us. It did not suit Abraham, but he wanted to care for them, wash their legs, and find something for them to eat. He wants to care for strangers. Can we care for strangers, people we do not know? Can we spend on them? Very well, they answered. Do as you say. Verse 6. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. See, he gives instruction. Verse 7, he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. He did not give them a leftover. He gave them fine flour, choice tender what? Calf to be prepared for them. He gave them the best. Yet he don't know who they are. He then brought some cod and milk and the, the calf had been prepared and set these before them while they ate. He stood near them under a tree or under a tree. Permit me, I'll take some of my tea. It's cold now. The first question that came to them, to Abraham was in verse nine, where is your wife, Sarah? They asked, now they mentioned Sarah by name. Where is your wife, Sarah? I think by using the word Sarah will suggest to Abraham, hmm, these people I'm tending to are rare. How did they know the name of my wife? Could you imagine somebody, just a visitor, a stranger, walking into your house, you cared for him, and the next thing he said was, where is your wife, Oloma? You know, calling my wife Oloma means that, said, and one of them said, remember there are three, one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, the whole understanding of Abraham is changed here. I'm not dealing with ordinary man. I'm not dealing with ordinary visitors. They know the name of his wife. They are now speaking of a son. If they know the name of my wife, and they are speaking about the baby for my wife at the age of 99, something is in the orphan. Something is in the orphan. These are not ordinary people. So at this point, Abraham may be getting who they are. And Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent which was behind him. Abraham said to Sarah, Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Getting a child is not about the pleasure. It's about what God said. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Sarah spoke this thing inside her heart, but the Lord had it. Very often we speak a lot of things inside our hearts and think that it is secret. 
is ringing like a bell in the ears of the Lord. That was why the Bible study on Sunday, I was laying strong emphasis on how to cancel dirty heart, evil heart, unclean heart. The Lord hears it. People next to you will not know, but God knows it. Sarah spoke, did not speak. He, a thought ran through him. I am past the age of childbearing. This is not going to happen. When we walk with God, we don't reason in the flesh. We come to God by faith. And I want to say that when God is determined to do something, our faith, our unbelief cannot stop him. Sarah showed unbelief here. But her unbelief was not going to start stop what God wants to do. If something happens in chapel of faith, the unbelief uh, on the willingness of some people in their heart or whatever cannot stop what God wants to do in chapel of faith. Or what Igbo community or uh, some people somewhere think about chapel of faith has no power over what God is determining to fulfill about the church he set up since 2008. The name of God is Almighty. That follows with verse 14. Verse 14 said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? The question, same question goes to all of us. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Yes, it is difficult in these days. Many people are asking for money through WhatsApp. Many people are dying and they need need and they are calling for help. And so we have some people out there, excuse me, for our Thanksgiving and harvest. And one will wonder, hmm, how is this gonna how is this going to happen? Since we set it up, only four people has only four people have responded. How is it gonna end up? The same question goes out. Is anything too hard for the Lord? And one may say, How are we gonna finance the church for the 2022? given the fact that we are few in the church. The same question comes, is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is hard for God, it is God. And he said, I will return to you at the appointed time next year. And Sarah will have a son. Case closed. I will return to you, Chapel of Faith. By this time next year, you will have forgotten that I have already blessed you and begin to fulfill plan for 2023. 2022 financial program has been closed because we have committed it to the Lord. And so shall our financial problems in chapel of faith be closed because the Lord is the Almighty. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. Or he said, yes, you did laugh. Our mindset cannot hinder what God has proposed in his heart to do. So it is. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything hard for me? Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, 
the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? We saw this in Genesis 1814. We're seeing it here again. We are serving a living God. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is too hard for him to do. And that is why we depend on God and he is our Lord. And Jesus made the same statement because he is God. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. When we pray today, let us pray with the mindset that with God, all things are possible. 